the world's largest digital camera. This is the size of an SUV. It weighs about 2.8 tons and it's a camera. It's the biggest camera ever built. Inside is a giant 3,200 megapixel CCD sensor array. To understand the resolution better, let's put it this way. The human eye can't see the whole image it takes. You know what they say about seeing the big picture? This is the biggest. It takes about 404K television screens to show a single image it captures. That's a basketball court full of TV screens. So what will this camera capture? The largest and most detailed video of the universe ever. But doesn't it need to be connected to a telescope to capture images from space? Yes, it does. And this camera was recently attached to an 8-meter telescope at the Rubin Observatory, which has been under development for 20 years. This observatory has become the largest astronomical exploration machine ever built. And this machine made its first transmission on the 23rd of June, 2025. Here is the first image shown to the whole world at the same time. How is this different from anything we've seen before, you might ask? Firstly, what you're seeing now is the first image recorded by the world's largest camera. But it's not the whole picture, only 2% of it. In other words, the whole picture is 50 times bigger than what we see on the screen. And this is a single frame. However, this camera will record many frames like this throughout the night, almost like a film of the night. It will make time-lapse videos with every frame this detailed. It will scan the entire southern hemisphere of the Earth every three to four nights, and then start again. This is the most important thing that distinguishes it from other large telescopes built before. Other telescopes are like very powerful binoculars, but the Rubin Observatory is like a kind of security camera. Other telescopes focus on one part of space and take pictures of it. This camera scans the sky continuously and records very high resolution video of it. I think we're beginning to see where this is going, aren't we? But first, let's take a look at the observatory where it is located because its design is also quite innovative. This observatory, whose full name is Vera C. Rubin, is built on the summit of a 2,682 meter high mountain in northern Chile. As you know, Chile is a country that hosts many telescopes due to its location and clear air. But they did three things differently in this observatory. The first one is the world's largest camera. It's even in the Guinness Book of World Records. It takes huge images with a resolution of 3,200 megapixels. One megapixel means one million pixels. So, as I mentioned earlier, that's more pixels than the human eye can see. Just one Rubin image covers an area of sky the size of 45 full moons. So, if we were to print it, it would take up as much space as a basketball court. But how will we see all its details? They've developed a special imaging tool for that. Anyone in the world can use it on the internet. Not only scientists, but everyone. I will show you what you can do with this imaging tool in a moment. But first, let me show you the second thing that makes this observatory different. The Simony Survey Telescope. This 8.4 meter telescope has a special design with three mirrors, which makes it very compact. Although it is a 300 ton telescope, it can move very fast. No other large telescope in the world is this fast. While others take minutes to maneuver, this one can change its angle in seconds. Other telescopes are as fast as a car, but ours is as fast as an aeroplane, the observatory's directors boast. I love it when scientists compete in these things. The third part of the observatory is the data center. Every night, terabytes of data are recorded because they're turning it into packets of about 20 terabytes. Imagine, this is a four terabyte hard drive, and every night this telescope fills five of them. And where is it? At the top of an isolated mountain in the middle of nowhere in Chile. From there, it is sent to the nearest center via fiber optic connection, and then to data centers in places like the USA, England, and France. In other words, in a sense, disaster backup is performed on different continents. Let's go back to that first image and try to understand what we are seeing. Here, of course, we see our universe full of stars and galaxies. When we look at the night sky with the naked eye, instead of those black regions between the stars that look empty, everything is bright here. There is hardly a pixel in this image that is not illuminated. 
And in this first image ever taken by the Rubin Observatory, we see space so intensely. So this is real space, it's not dark. It's brightly lit spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, clusters of galaxies, hundreds of them merging together. Look over there, for example, it's an incredible sight. These close by are blue spiral galaxies. The ones further away in yellow and red are elliptical galaxies. And this coloring is not just by chance, we see everything in stark white. But this camera sees and colors more of the light spectrum, and this is very important for science, because in a sense we are seeing space in three dimensions. It is important because scientists use these colors to estimate the distances to galaxies. We also notice that the galaxies in this image are not just randomly distributed, but clustered. The statistical details of these clusters and the distances to these galaxies, determined from the colors of this camera called LSST, will enable us to study the expansion history of the universe. And more importantly, it will give us the opportunity to make very precise, unprecedentedly detailed observations of how dark matter and dark energy work. That's why this observatory is named after Vera C. Rubin, a scientist working on dark matter. It may be hard to believe, but there are nearly 10 million galaxies in this image alone. I say galaxies, not stars, so think of it like this. Imagine that you gather 10 million people in the city you live in, bring them together and take a photograph of them. Then, when you zoom in on that photograph, you realize that each person is actually 100 billion people. 10 planets full of people. In the past, we used to call those 3 to 5 bright objects that we see when we look at the sky with the naked eye as stars. It turns out that some of them are galaxies consisting of billions of stars. And there are 10 million of these galaxies just in this image. Look at this image of the same region. Now you see some names, right? Because these have been observed before, and of course they've been named. But most of the fainter objects don't even have names. Because they've never been analyzed before. Most of these objects have never been seen by humans before. So every night, the Rubin Observatory will continuously scan the sky and continue to capture these images. Scientists will combine multiple images of a region of the sky to create a template image of what that region typically looks like. In a way, we can call it a map of the sky. As this camera continues to capture new images, each new image will be compared to that first template image. Changes will be detected by scanning pixel by pixel, a technique called difference imaging. Well, you may ask, how can there be a difference from night to night? Because when we look at it, we always seem to see the same things, but some things change. Basically, three things change. Brightness, motion, and vibration. For example, if the brightness changes there, it means there is a supernova. If it's moving fast, it could be an asteroid or an interstellar object. Do you remember this? If there is a pulsation, we can talk about a pulsar in that region. In the first image just now, we said there were 10 million galaxies, but remember, that's only a tiny fraction of the sky visible from the southern hemisphere of the Earth. The Rubin Observatory will follow 40 billion celestial objects like them for the next 10 years, taking not only photographs but also videos. It will try to capture all the movements of the sky. Oh, by the way, there are two types of moving objects in the sky. For example, the stars in our galaxy are moving, but it is a relatively slow movement. We have already detected this because they move slowly, but there are also objects that move much faster. Asteroids. Some 200 years ago, we didn't even know they existed. But now let's take a look at the asteroids that this new observatory has discovered with just a few nights of data. Nothing is moving here yet. This is just to show a small part of the image that we're going to zoom in on to talk about asteroids. Well, nothing's moving here either. All we can see are two spiral galaxies. What we can't see are asteroids passing in front of these two beautiful galaxies. Look, they've shown those asteroids here as colored lines. These are not satellites. They're asteroids moving during the exposure. This colorful image was created by combining and compositing many single exposures. Those with Android mobile phones can try this. Samsung calls it Star Trail. I have shown it as a reel before, but that feature only captures the lines of stars. 
Asteroids are much darker in the sky, but since they move much faster, they disappear immediately after you take a picture of them with a long exposure. So they only last for one exposure. These colors therefore correspond to the primary colors used to create the color image. So red, green, blue. And so the scientists are able to remove these asteroids from the raw image when stitching it together. The software they have developed can recognize and identify fast-moving celestial objects such as asteroids and temporarily remove them to avoid confusion when merging them into a single image. That's why we didn't recognize them in the previous images, but their data and, most importantly, their motion information have been recorded. Moreover, if any unexpected movement is observed, the system broadcasts this as a warning. Now, let's see those movements. In this video, we see images taken over 10 hours of observation. Stars and galaxies are more static, but asteroids are much faster. All of the asteroids in these images recorded over 10 hours were newly discovered. And now, we're starting to see new asteroids being discovered on different nights. And you can read at the bottom how many new asteroids were discovered on which night. And now, we can see where they are in the solar system. This dark blue ring is a simulation of all the asteroids thought to be in that region of the solar system. The tiny slice in light blue is the location of the asteroids that were discovered during the nights we just watched. So, all these new discoveries were found in a tiny slice of that big ring. In these few nights of data, around 2,000 new asteroids were found, and seven of them were identified as near-Earth objects, because their orbits come very close to Earth. But don't worry, none of them are in a position to hit the Earth. Nevertheless, this system will also work as a kind of early warning system, because it is thought to detect thousands of new celestial bodies that will come closer to Earth. And in two years, we will discover about 5 million new asteroids with this camera. Look, this is five times more than all the asteroids discovered by all astronomers of the world in the last 200 years. In other words, this new telescope alone will discover more asteroids in the next two years than all the asteroids we have found since the discovery of the first asteroid 200 years ago. This camera will also analyze exploding dying stars, supernovae. The brightness of some stars can change in minutes. And since this camera can record not only photographs but also videos, we will be able to analyze the behavior of such stars for the first time. Look, I say we will be able to analyze because this is a non-profit organization and the data it obtains will be shared not only with scientists but also with all people. So please let teachers tell their students, students tell their friends, and friends tell the curious. I'll leave links below this video. Save it somewhere. For the next 10 years, we will be able to watch an almost live video of the sky together. Now let me show you how we can do this. You can use this web-based tool in the same way you use Google Maps. The area we are observing here shows us the Virgo cluster and its surroundings, which is about 55 million light years away from Earth. It's just 14 degrees of the sky, and it consists of about 3 trillion pixels collected by Rubin in just 7 nights. And yes, of course you can zoom in and see each pixel individually. For example, this is Messier 49. As you can see from its yellowish color, it's a galaxy of old stars. On the left are galaxies with lighter blue colored stars. These are the nurseries of the universe. New stars are forming there. This handsome galaxy at the bottom is Messier 61, just like our Milky Way. It's a spiral galaxy. Dr. Vera, for whom the observatory is named, studied the rotational motion of such spiral galaxies in the 1970s, and his studies provided us with the first convincing evidence for the existence of dark matter in the universe. These dark matter and dark energy issues are really very interesting. It is one of the most mysterious subjects of the universe. I had prepared a very nice video about it. Those who are curious and those who still haven't subscribed should definitely watch that video. Again, I will leave the link in the explanation section. Look, some galaxies have only two arms. For example, this galaxy called NGC 434. This is another spiral galaxy called NGC 4343. But because we see it from the side, it looks like a disk. It looks like there's a war going on here. Everybody's fighting each other. More than one galaxy has started to merge. The stars, gas, and dust clouds in those galaxies are stretching their tails and arcs. 
The ones just below them are actually at such a distance from each other that they can coexist without any interaction like before. We see them side by side like this, but in fact the one on the right is 50 million light years away, and the one on the left is 70 million light years away. If you notice here, the number of orange and red dots has started to increase considerably, and they are much smaller than the blue or yellowish regions. This is because they are the galaxies furthest away from us. In a sense, like when we look at them, we see, we see the early times of the universe. So this is like a visual time machine. Look, they left the traces of asteroids here on purpose. I told you that they normally hide them automatically to avoid image pollution, but they have shown them here as an example. And you can turn them on and off manually if you want. Let's remember why they are so colorful. The camera takes an exposure of around 30 seconds each time. The asteroid moves during each exposure, each observation. And the different filters that capture it are assigned different colors in the composite image. This causes the multicolored paths of the asteroids. Look, these aren't galaxies, they're stars. And they are much, much closer to us than other celestial bodies because they're in our galaxy. And that's why their light has caused such sharp spikes on the camera. It's called a lens flare, or a spike. Because of the rotation of the Earth, they appear at a different angle in each image and create such a colorful pattern around them. If there is a place you like in this map, in this image, you can create a link to it in the exact scale you see and share it with others. You can discuss and talk about it. When we zoom out on this map and look at the whole picture, we realize that the edges of the picture are like this, square by square. This camera will continue to add those missing pieces to the edges of the picture every night and will allow us to discover other cosmic treasures in the sky. Look, let's recap again right now. We've just seen things that have never been seen before, guys. For such high-resolution images, the human eye or even the huge resolution screens we have invented so far are not enough. That's why we use such an advanced tool. If there are those who have seen all this and still don't get goosebumps, well, what can I say? They don't know enough or don't think enough. Worse, they don't care. And that, my friends, is your duty if you'll accept it. To spread this sense of wonder. To share what you've discovered. Look, there are more stars here than anyone else on Earth. So you can choose a star for yourself and claim it as your own. No one can stop you. There's enough for everyone. More than enough. So once you pick a star, look at it every night. Watch it. Be inspired by it. Only that's my star.